WebGoat. That is a very interesting piece of software developed by OWASP, the good organization concerning us about web securities and stuff like that. So we should be concerned always, but we should also be secure and stay up to date in our knowledge. So a <clears throat> different way of doing that is of course, installing the newest version of WebGoat. I have the 2023, I think it's the fourth compile, I guess that is the one they write it, or just the fourth month, I don't know. Uh, anyways, this is a jar file I downloaded and basically um, it's straightforward. Just go ahead to the internet and write webcode download and then you're going to pick the very first link I think it is and then you can go ahead and pick the standalone jars from the uh, web page os.org. There's also a direct link I think Google but you know I wouldn't necessarily do that always go to the uh, from the um, start of the page. So standalone jars and then go ahead and pick the one called jar if you want to have that. You can also just right click and say, uh, uh, what's it called, copy link, go back to your terminal just like that and then open new terminal and then do a totally standard wget, download the file and that's about it. Now when you're running it, you might get some errors at the very first start. So if you're going to try and pop this uh, Java jar executional command, setting the uh, server to run at my own localhost IP address, well, it might tell you a weird error, something about error and version and stuff like that. If that is the case, it's probably because you're trying to run the web code on a machine that have a too old Java installation. So that is uh, <laughs> that, that is the thing that can be quite annoying and I, I see many people struggle with the fact that they need to update the Java on the machine. So I'm also gonna show that right now. What you're gonna do is go into your Linux Kali or whatever Linux machine terminal. Uh, for Windows, it's basically the same, you know, you just press a button instead, you know, the Java button. I think it's, um, I don't know if I have it anywhere. Um, you see, no, I don't. Anyway, so if you have a Windows, another machine, or a Mac, you know, just you know, basically just update your Java the way you always do. But this is for Linux, and what you're gonna do is first of all update your uh, APT. Could be done like this, and then write update. You might need sudo in front of it. Who cares? Maybe you need to do uh, apt dash get, depending on. Um, how you use it normally. Uh, I don't use any other like pip or whatever they, they call it that much because I feel that too many things out there, you know, it's gonna confuse the hell just everyone about it. So use standard tools. After that, you're gonna go ahead and do sudo apt get or apt install, and then do the default JDK. When you've done that, you know, when I did it, I didn't need to restart my machine. You might need to restart, so just go ahead and press the restart button and restart the machine. This is a virtual machine, of course. Doesn't really matter, it's virtual, install the same button, same place, same functionality. So, when that is done and you updated that, you know, you are good to go. You don't need to do anything more now. Now you just need to run the web code. That is by typing this command right here. It is of course important that you execute the command in the same folder where the jar file is located. I have had some people asking why it doesn't work. I was like, yeah, but maybe it's because your jar file is in a different folder where you execute your command. Remember that a file is not global, so the commands might be because there is a environment variable for it, but for the file it is not, so you need to execute the Java command in the same directory, oops, as where the file located. When you've done that, you just press enter and hocus pocus, the web code will boot up and now we can go ahead and use it. Typical Linux output, a lot of text doesn't really make any sense. So, <laughs> and sooner or later we should get a IP address with a, um, that we have it down here. So 127.001 port 8080 slash web code, gonna copy paste that. Go to your browser and basically just, you know, put it in your, oops, I copy pasted it again. Let me just copy paste it one more time. There we go. I'm gonna get this window now. 
And if you're not registered and you have no user, just press register. This is a local registration, so no worries. You can just do anything, just any stupid account, whatever you could put a password, agree to terms. So when you have a user, just go back, log in. I have the very secure user <laughs> with a very secure password. Press sign in and boom, you're done. So now you are actually good to go on the uh, web code. And we can go and check out, well, is this the newest OS that it actually is all about? So let's go ahead to OS top 10. There you go. Let's say broken access control, cryptographic failures, injection, security misconfiguration, yeah, into secure design. Did they replace misconfiguration, all outdated? Mm. So the A4 is not there. Mm, maybe that is because it's a design feature, isn't it? Yeah, it's a design feature. So that's not testable in the web. So misconfiguration, outdated, identify all failures, software integrity, logging, and server-side request forgery. So it's now up to date. Also gonna be a client-side uh, bypass um, part. I would say in most occasions it's kind of a waste of time to pen test the client side, but there are a few things that could be interesting, just like, you know, um, can you do HTML injection or cross the script and stuff like that. Only on the front end, by the way. Challenges, and I guess that is very interesting that so I put in some challenges. Also, we have a general introduction. I don't know what that is. Uh, let me see, web code, what is that? What is web code? Welcome me. Uh, deliberately insecure application, great. And also the web wolf, uh, what's that? Web wolf is the lesson specified you can use it for many lessons when you have web code using web wolf. Lessons where you can use web wolf are marked. What is web wolf? Um, uh, WebWolf opens a new browser that sim simulates an attacker's machine. It makes it possible for you to, to distinguish. Okay, very interesting. So, anyways, this is the um, the newer version. I haven't tried, you know, WebGoat for quite a while, as you can hear. So we can press the WebWolf and some challenges. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, so they got some new uh, stuff in the field and you can log in, log out, and you can change the language and statistics. Total number of lessons 35 and assignments 90. And we solved mm, opening web code, I guess. <laughs> so this is the, um, what is, that this can send an email to someone yeah okay so this is web code and i think if you like it you know go ahead and play with it in the next video we're going to go ahead and check out some of the challenges for now we just install it and run it on, Lin on linux kaylee i wouldn't recommend running it on windows for example because all your hacking tools is going to be on linux kaylee and all your um, collections of installed software for hacking also gonna be on Linux Kaylee. So doing that on Windows, it can be quite difficult. Of course, some of the, the software on Linux Kaylee is also possible to get on Windows for standalone binaries like um, I think Nmap and, and also Burp, Proxy and stuff like that. But just overall, you know, use Linux Kaylee. It's gonna be the way to go for you and you're gonna be really good and fine. So really hope you liked the video, you learned something from it. And if you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It will help me quite a lot to get the video spread out there. Also, if you have any questions, so leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. See you out there and go nuts and hack. Ethical reasons, of course.